So what's different sometimes in the grade 11 question is this is a solving for an angle question, which you had solving for angle questions in grade 10. But in grade 10, you had the triangle drawn first, and then you solve the angle. In grade 11, the triangle is often not drawn for you, so you have to draw the triangle to see up where it would be. So tan theta equals negative 4 thirds. If we are going to draw the triangle, or we're going to draw this, now we're looking from 0 to 360. So it's going to be an angle in standard position in one of the four quadrants. And depending which quadrant it's in will depend where you draw your triangle. Can you see that according to your cast rule, that since tan is negative, all of them are positive in quadrant one, so it can't be there. Tan is positive in quadrant three, so it can't be there. According to our cast rule, this is going to be in either quadrant two or quadrant four. We can then draw a picture of an angle in standard position in quadrant two. And we can draw a picture of an angle in standard position in quadrant four. If we draw those, we can also label the reference angle theta r there and theta r there. That reference angle tells us where our triangle is. What do we know about this triangle? We know that since tan is negative 4 over 3, that the opposite side would be 4 and the adjacent side would be 3, or at least some multiple of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label my opposite side of 4, my adjacent side of 3. Same thing on this triangle. And by some multiple, like it could have been 8 and 6, because that would still reduce to 4 thirds. But for the most time, for the most part, whatever numbers we give, that's what we label our triangle as. And now we've made a triangle. And in that triangle, the only angle in that triangle is your reference angle. So what we need to do in grade 11 is find that reference angle. And a note that I made for you yesterday is when you write out your equation to find your reference angle, we always use positive values. So even though tan of theta is negative 4 thirds, to find your reference angle, tan of your reference angle is actually a great tan tree question. You've drawn a triangle, you can find that angle. So I go to my calculator. I go tan inverse of 4 thirds. 53.13, and I'll show that work, right? Solving for an angle, you would do tan inverse of 4 thirds. And then rounded to two decimal places, I've got 53.13 degrees. And now we can find out the actual answers for theta. We've drawn our pictures. If this is 53 in the triangle, how big is this angle? Ooh, I want to pull that calculator back so I'll just make we'll just go tan inverse. There's our 53. 
degree three. Can you see that this one you would find by doing 180 would be too far? And then subtract. Again, you know that halfway around is 180. So if I did 180 minus the answer I just got, I get 126.86. I'm going to read my question. Do they want us to round to the nearest degree? Can you see to the nearest degree that would be 127 degrees? I'm going to label that on that picture as well. Quadrant four. Okay. Quadrant four, if I want to find this angle and I want to use the reference angle, I could go all the way around, which is 360 degrees, and then subtract my reference angle. So 360 subtract. 53.13, I get 306.86 to the nearest degree. This one would be 307 degrees. You will do this another 100 times in grade 12. This process that we just did Super, super important to understand what's going on, okay? So what happens is trigonometry gets, oh, this one. Trigonometry gets defined for angles above 90 degrees. Now, there are no right angle triangles that have 110 degrees or 307 degrees. That's not possible. We have to pause. No, it should be. Okay. All right. Um. So what trigonometry does for angles bigger than 90 degrees? Because you cannot make a right angle triangle for an angle bigger than 90 degrees. But they said if we use the reference angle and the cast rule, we can do trigonometry for angles bigger than 90 degrees. So for example. 127 that we just found. I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to write tan of, and I'm going to use all the decimal places here. If I write tan of this angle, okay, according to our equation, what should come out? Negative 4 over 3. Now my calculator is going to give a decimal. Negative 4 over 3 as a decimal would be negative 1.3 repeated. Can you see that? So this is telling me that if I go to my calculator and I type this, I should get negative 1.3 repeated. And I do. A little bit at the end of the decimal is off just because the computer has to run. Okay. Again, if I do the same thing with tan of 307 degrees. I also get negative 1.3 repeated. So trigonometry is now expanding to be beyond just right angle triangles, even though our definition for sine and cos and tan started off only working for right angle triangles. We make the idea of, oh, I didn't want to close that, but I did. We make an idea of a reference angle so we can still draw right angle triangles. But in order to help us tell where those angles are, we introduce the cast rule. So now there's always two places where sine can be positive and two places where sine can be negative. Two places where cos can be positive, two places where cos can be negative. And so in these questions, to the nearest degree, solving them, we often get two answers. Because from 0 to 360, there's always two places where something is positive and two places where something is negative. Okay, I'm going to do one more with you. I'm just going to make up a second example here, just so that we can see more. So these ones are
And in these questions, they will often tell you what you have to look at. Most of the time, they'll say theta is between 0 and 360, meaning that you're going all the way around the circle once. Sometimes they say only look between 0 and 180, or only look between 0 and 90. In grade 12, they go all over the place. Sometimes they say only look between negative 720 and negative 360. So we do this idea again in grade 12 pre-calculus a lot. And so to make your grade 12 pre-calculus easier, we really have to pay attention to this right now and understand it. So we're solving for theta. We're going to have to use cos inverse. But now, no triangle is given. We have to figure out where those triangles are. According to our cast rule, if cos is negative, it's not in quadrant 1 and it's not in quadrant 4. So we can draw a picture of an angle in quadrant 2, and we can draw a picture of an angle in quadrant 3. And this will be our answer. There's one answer for theta. There's another answer for theta. But on these, you can always, to the nearest x-axis, never the nearest y-axis, label your reference angle. And you can make a triangle back to the nearest x-axis with your reference angle. And we know something about the lengths of these triangles. We know since cos, the definition of cos, is adjacent over hypotenuse, we would know that the 2 would go here and the 3 here, 2 here, and 3 there. Does that make sense? That's just the definition of cos. And now we've labeled a triangle, which has, allows us to do math from grade 10. Because we could do sine, cos, and tan if we had a triangle in grade 10. What's in the triangle? In the triangle is our reference angle. And again, even though, even though cos of theta is negative 2 thirds, the cos of the reference angle is always positive. It'll be positive 2 thirds. You go to your calculator. You would type in the cos inverse of 2 thirds. And what do you get when you do cos inverse of 2 thirds? 48.19. 48.19. That's the reference angle. So again, you have to think about your pictures. Okay? There are some people who memorize these as formulas. They're not worth wasting brain space to memorize because if you think about the picture, does it make sense that this one would be 180 minus your reference angle? Like you can just, I hope, just look at the picture and that makes sense to you. If something makes sense to you, you don't need to memorize it. Okay? What are things that we memorize? We memorize things that don't, like, don't actually make sense to us. Like I don't think you'd memorize 2 plus 2 equals 4. It just makes sense to you. And so it's not actually, it's a different, I mean, it's in your memory, it's in your brain, but it's different. The more things that we can put, especially for math, because like math is already hard by the time you get to grade 11, it gets harder in grade 12. The more things in math that you put into your brain because they make sense, the easier the rest of your math is. There is some things that you will have to do in math that don't make sense, right? You have to memorize what a reference angle is, because it's a, just a definition. That's something you have to memorize. But figuring this out to be 180 minus 48.19, so I'm going to round to the nearest decimal, 180 minus 40 to the nearest degree, 
Figuring this out to be 132 degrees should just make sense and shouldn't be something that you need to memorize a formula. Right? Because if it makes sense, you can do the same thinking for this one. How would I figure out this angle if I know this is 180 up to there? Does it make sense that you would do 180 plus your reference angle? Do you see that? So I go to my calculator, I do 180 plus 48, and this angle would be 228 degrees. And this is what's new for solving in grade 11. Okay? Solving in grade 10 was just you're given a triangle, had to solve things with the triangle. In grade 11, trig equations often, they don't show you the triangle. You have to use your cast rule to figure out where the triangles would be. You have to figure out your reference angle because that's the only thing in the triangle. And then you can solve it. Okay? Now, what makes students perhaps like what sometimes can make trigonometry hard for students in grade 11 is they don't require you to draw these pictures out. Technically, you could go right from here to here to there with skipping the drawing. Okay? The reason I would recommend is I would say make sure you draw the pictures out until it makes so much sense to you that you see the pictures in your head. If you see the pictures of those triangles in your head, you don't have to draw them if you understand. But if you're just doing it because you've memorized it, then you have to draw the triangle. Because I need you to understand where the answers are coming from. Because that's going to make your grade 12 math a lot easier. Okay, questions to practice for this one. 14, 15, 16, and 19. Um, I'm going to give you some time at the end of class to work on that. We're going to do our second example together first.